Hello guys, so first of all let me tell you that this video is specially dedicated to some of my friends who say that they do not understand anything of my videos when I make videos about ROMs like Sinusian Mod, features of Sinusian Mod they do not understand anything about that so this video is for them and I am pretty much sure that you also will be able to understand everything which I am going to explain about RAMs so let's get started with the video so first of all whenever we decide to buy a RAM we go online then search for the RAMs available and then we see different measures by which we can buy a RAM like memory, by memory I mean 4GB of RAM, 8GB of RAM, 16GB of RAM then frequency which is the clock frequency of the RAM that is 1600MHz or 1800MHz then cache latency which is usually mentioned in 4 numbers and the first number out of that is the cache latency I'll come to that later on so initially RAM means random access memory uh, as the name suggests it can randomly access the memory it's not like your hard drive or flash drive which stores the data permanently RAM stores the data temporarily whenever you need it so first of all how much memory do you need if you are a normal user like you only do uh, web browsing you listen to songs on your PC you play normal games like don't play heavy games at 1080p or 4k then 4GB of RAM is more than enough for you but if you are a heavy gamer or if you edit videos on a large scale then 8GB of RAM is good for you and 8GB should be more than sufficient because 16GB is way too much unless and until you use too many applications at the same time like you are using Sony Vegas Pro, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere Pro After Effects, all the applications at the same time only then you will need 16GB of RAM otherwise 8GB of RAM for gaming and video editing is more than sufficient so let's see what is actually memory of a RAM suppose you have 4GB of RAM then imagine this as your RAM this is empty because we have not yet started the PC this is the 4GB of RAM assume this is 4GB of RAM and if you move to 8GB then this is the 8GB of RAM so as you can see there is difference this can store less amount of data as compared to this one and as soon as you start your PC the OS is loaded into this so some of the part of the 4GB of RAM is filled and as soon as the PC starts you open a VLC media player to play a song then VLC media player is taken and put into the RAM once again and now you decide to open Photoshop and as you can see the RAM is filled yeah the RAM is filled so you can't open Photoshop unless and until there is free space in the RAM so what system does or RAM does is that it removes some of the applications from the memory and it gives that space to add a Photoshop so that the Photoshop comes into this and this removal and putting of the add of Photoshop might be sometimes lagging so that's why you need higher RAM which is of 8GB or more if you are heavy user but as soon as that's done Adobe Photoshop comes into the RAM the Adobe Photoshop starts running so by now you must have understood what is memory of a RAM and what does it do and how it is helpful so let's get to something else that's the frequency you must have seen RAMs with 1600 MHz frequency, 1300 MHz frequency, 1800 and 2400 MHz frequency what does these numbers actually mean? assume a road of this much length so you let's call this a 13 MHz RAM you move to 1600 megahertz then the road becomes wider of this much width then move to 1800 megahertz it becomes more wide of this much width and if you move to 2400 megahertz then the road becomes of this much width and as in normal case if the road is wider then more vehicles can go and more vehicles can come at the same time but if we assume the shorter road of 1300 megahertz RAM less number of vehicles can go and come at the same time this is what frequency does in a RAM so if you have higher frequency then more data can be sent and received at the same time but as you know in real life as the width of the road increases the cost to build that road also increases same is the case with the RAM as you move to 2400 MHz or 2100 MHz the cost of the RAM increases as compared to 1600 or 1800 MHz RAM so which frequency of RAM do you actually need? so let's start with a normal basic user if you do normal browsing, listen to songs, play normal games, not heavy games then 1600MHz RAM is more than sufficient for you and 4GB of RAM as I mentioned earlier is good enough but if you go on a little higher side and if you want your machine to be a little future proof like if you want it to run for next 5 years or if you are a gamer, heavy gamer or normal gamer and if you edit videos for a longer time then you should go for 1800MHz RAM because 1800 MHz RAM is like sweet spot between 1600 and 2100 MHz because 2100 MHz RAM 
a little costlier and when it comes to 1600 or 1800 mega RAM the price difference between both of them is not that much it's around 10 dollars or 1000 rupees for that matter so it's quite okay to go with a 1800 mega RAM rather than going with 1600 mega RAM so this is how the frequency works and the one more important thing is the cache latency the four numbers which you see on each of the RAM so as you can see over here, the first number is the cache latency, the second number is TRCD, the third number is TRP and the fourth number is TRAS. All these numbers have some meaning but I cannot explain them in this video because uh, the video will become very long. So I will be making a separate video on it. So I will give the annotation link over here or you can click in the description below for that video. So let's see what does cache latency actually mean. So according to Wikipedia, it is the delay time between the moment a memory controller tells the memory module to access a particular memory column on a RAM module and the moment the data blah 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 blah. So you will not understand that obviously. Even I didn't understand that at the first moment. So what does this basically mean is that assume this is your processor and this is your RAM module. So as soon as the processor asks for the data or the memory on the RAM, a signal is sent to the RAM and then the signal comes back to the processor once again and the time taken to do this is the cache latency so obviously if the cache latency is low then the speed will be faster so if you go on the lower side of cache latency that is 7 or 8 rather 8 then the price will go on the higher side so what is the sweet point of the cache latency according to me cache latency 9 is very good 1800 megahertz RAM with cache latency of 9 will be more than sufficient for anyone who is using the PC for any purposes. Even after having higher clock speed and lower cache latency, there was not much difference between 600 MHz or 1800 MHz RAM and 2400 MHz RAM. So if you are buying a RAM, then 1800 MHz RAM with cache latency of 9 will be good enough. But you can even go for 1600 MHz RAM and that won't affect your performance by any way. In any means, you won't be able to notice the difference between a 1600 MHz RAM with cache latency of 9 and 1800 MHz of RAM with cache latency of 9. There is very less theoretical difference and in practical life, it's equal to none. So it's up to you which RAM you want to buy. So guys, this was for cache latency. Now I'll tell you some of the factors which you should consider before buying a RAM. That if you have a 32-bit Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10 system, then it will support maximum of 4 GB of RAM. Even if you have 16 GB of RAM installed and you have a 32 bit system, it will only use 4 GB of that and rest of the RAM will not be of any use. So if you are planning to buy a RAM of 8 GB of 16 GB, you need to have or you should have 64 bit operating system in order to use complete 8 GB or 16 GB or 32 GB. Even you can go for 64 128 GB of RAM if you have 64 bit operating system. And another most important factor while buying a RAM which uh, no one actually tells is that if you are buying a RAM then see to it that your motherboard also supports the frequency of the RAM which you are using. Like as I told earlier that 1800 MHz RAM is preferable but if your motherboard doesn't support 1800 MHz RAM and it supports only 1600 MHz RAM then it won't be useful because your RAM will be running on 1600 MHz only. So before buying 1800 MHz RAM, see to it that your motherboard supports 1800 MHz RAM too. And if you are planning to upgrade your old RAM, like you were having 2 GB of RAM earlier, 2-3 uh, years back, and now you are planning to have 8 GB of RAM, then that might not be possible because your motherboard may not support more than 4 GB or 8 GB of RAM. But considering newest motherboards, like if you consider any motherboard of past 1 year, then it, you won't be in any problem but if your PC is 2-3 years old or 4-5 years old then see to it that your motherboard also supports it and one more thing if you are planning to buy 8GB of RAM then I would suggest you to buy 2 sticks of 4GB so that your, your system can take advantage of dual channel memory and another important thing behind this is that if any one stick goes bad like if one 4GB of stick goes bad and it stops working you still have a backup of another 4GB we, on which you can still run the system but if you have only one stick of 8 GB and if that goes bad then you don't have any backup for that so it's like uh, use dual channel memory like if you are buying 8 GB of RAM then use 4 4 GB if you are buying 16 GB then consider 8 and 8 GB of RAM or you can go for 4 sticks of 4 GB it's up to you so this is it for this video guys thank you for watching hope you like this video if you like this video then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up 
and don't forget to share this video with your friends so that they will also come to know everything about RAM and I'll be making one more video on RAM like explaining the timings on the RAM which are mentioned like in the four numbers I'll be explaining that so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so thank you guys thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button thank you